Okay, this freaking guy, hey, come watch a live birth. This is like the coolest clip for people like us. It's so minimal doing like the least amount of work for the maximum amount of output. So do you guys have any idea what programs are used for this? This episode's brought to you by Squarespace. Stick around to the end to see how you can save 10% off your first domain. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of VFX Artist React. I'm actually not sure if this is VFX Artist React or CG Artist React. It's, it's Beeple digital. React, dude. It's, it's Beeple, Beeple React. React. We are joined here by the notorious digital artist Beeple. So Beeple here, also known as Mike, he creates a work of art every single day. So I mostly use Cinema 4D with Octane Render. I use a lot of pre-made models from Turbo Squid to Kitbash 3D, real displacement textures, game textures. My workflow is a lot like kid playing with toys and breaking them apart and putting them together and setting up a scene and then sort of like taking a picture. And it allows me to build pictures that are fairly complex, very fast. We want to sit down and do a special version of this show. We're not gonna be focusing on visual effects for movies. We're gonna be focusing on some crazy CG art videos. Stuff that you've probably never seen before. It's hopefully gonna blow your mind. It's gonna be a little weird, it's gonna be a little wacky, but it's Buckle definitely gonna up. be fresh. Buckle up. Buckle up, dude. <laughs> Buckle up. This first clip is by an artist named Igor. It's wacky and crazy, have fun. This is great. Imagine so dancing good. that hard, like at a wedding. <laughs> the edit is super good. The destruction sims, like <laughs> everything. Like there's so much, like look at that. It's, oh my God, <laughs> so great. good. Oh my God. I love that what transition. What a reveal. There's so many shots in it too. That was not a small amount of work. And some of them are quite complex. Yeah, you usually don't see like complex physical simulations and special effects in like a wacky, crazy, surrealist music video. What I'm always looking for is things that are like, I've never seen something like that before. The other thing is when I can see for sure that this took like a crap load of work. Like, yeah, like little, just like quick shots <laughs> like that. This like a two second shot that took like a day. Like that's not <laughs> nothing. How often are you watching crazy stuff like this and getting inspired by this stuff? Or is it more like you just kind of have a database of stuff in your head that you're already going for? No, I definitely would say I get, you know, inspired by stuff like this and it might just be a small moment or a shape or a shot or, you know, a composition, you know, it could be a bunch of different small things like that. I mean, that doesn't look that far from something that I would do. Like, you know what I mean? It's not that far off. Let's be honest. David O'Reilly is a pretty unique animator, 3D artist. This won't seem like a sensical video, but it has impact and I kind of want to talk about that. If you're doing something abstract, how do you find the art in that abstraction? What can make an abstract work give you an emotion and other abstract work doesn't do anything for you? The two things, just exactly what I said about that other video. I can tell this took a buttload of time. And two, it's like, I've never seen that before. <laughs> it just looks very tight and the characters are super well designed and interesting and fresh. To me, it just seemed like very ahead of its time. You know, you talk about mood and it's one of those things that kind of like glides by because you're focused on the crazy subject of this piece. But you know, the crashed world or two bombers slightly sticking out of the fog. The Nazi symbology combined yeah. with the old Walt Disney stuff. The strobe lights flickering on and off all over the place that are pretty artfully placed. And then the only color being here. Wait, there's color there? Yeah, wait. The wait. cat's nose and eyes. Colorblind? Oh, yeah, yeah. Clint's colorblind. I don't see the eyes. I okay, see the... you're fired. <laughs> what? Oh, shit, son, you just got fired, bro. <laughs> got fired on one of the artist reacts. The... There's the thumbnail. Clint got fired by people. <laughs> I like how he intentionally does low frame rate animations too, because you can render out CG animation at whatever frame rate you want. You know, it's like, why not render out at 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second? But he intentionally does like a 12 frames per second look, which gives it almost like a stop motion, claymation, hand animation feel. Disconnects it a little bit from reality and it makes it feel more like an animation. That's the like subtle things in his craft. The animation is stylized, but also quite realistic. Like don't know a lot of context about this one. I somehow stumbled across it on YouTube when it had like a thousand views. And you watch it and like, I cannot find the little line where like real ends and CG begins. It's freaking creeping me out. No, <laughs> just wait. <laughs> That 
That's so disgusting. Mm, right, yeah. But it's beautiful at the same time. Oh! I don't even know how they're doing this. Is it CG? I can't, I literally can't quite tell. I can guess, but. Okay, god damn, this freaking guy, hey, come watch a live birth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no CG here. This is just me being born. God damn it, guy. Why would you show me this? No, dude, this is so good. Yeah, what the hell? How does this only have 50,000 views? This is freaking insane. Who is that? Martin DeThura. Oh my God. It's just done so well, like you were saying. So subtle and the comping was just like so on point. I think the decision to make it black and white is really, really great here because it just, it makes all the CG blend so much better. Also, yeah, it allows you to really focus on the light values and craft your frame without having to worry about color. You just look at, can I read these silhouettes and these shapes perfectly? And you do with everything here. Yeah, yeah, you can see specular like bumps that kind of like, oh, okay, that slime here. Like, oh, that's like hairy, what the f It is just so good. <laughs> Raul Marx. I think he's got one or two Emmys. He did this amazing, amazing piece. Like, Semi-permanent title is like 2015. This is all done by him in like a month or two. That looks Dude, amazing. Look at that. So sick. His lighting is nuts. Yeah. It's so lighting good. Lighting is so good. The Compositions are so good. So on look point. Look at that. The scale, like that's a sense of scale. So good, just the tiniest little speck. It takes a lot of guts to like scale your image down. It's like, that's probably that a pixel. Much. It's like, you'll still yeah. be able to see him. Oh my God. Yeah, and then he gave away this model. So you've seen that model, this model specifically in hundreds of things. I love that lighting, the black and white, like super sharp lighting yeah. looks so good. It's the hardest thing about like lighting is like, you'll think in your mind, like, I'll light up the silhouette of this thing. And then you go and you start putting lights in your scene. And it's like, oh, but that thing casts a shadow over here. If I put a light over here, it makes a reflection over there. And you start to wonder like, how do you get this amazingly clear, clean lighting that like makes my silhouettes pop? It just takes like so much time and craft to be able to know where to put your lights, where to put your flags, which are things that block light, and how to perfectly describe the shape of the objects in your scene with your lights and flags. It's freaking nuts. He has definitely been super, super big, like inspiration, just insane. So as you can tell, we're doing things a little bit differently for this episode of VFX Artists React. And as part of doing things differently, it's not just me, me and Clint on the couch. We're actually gonna be swapping out some of the other team here because they also have some cool art videos. So Clint, you're up next. Who do you want to be your partner? Ren, Sam, or myself? I think I'm gonna call Sam down. Okay, so it turns out Sam and I are the same person. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, snap. <laughs> does that hey, hurt when up, you guys? do that? Like, is that painful? Uh, no, it's momentary. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. Anyways, so what were we saying? Uh, Actually, here, this is, I'm gonna pull up some clips, so if you don't mind getting in the middle. Yeah. I'll just take, Let's I'll do take it. <laughs> Mike, the first clip I got for you is called Going to the Store. And I know you've seen this one. So good. Dude, those shots are so good. That freaking hip shelf. So gross. And the fact that the skin shader looks so real yeah. is like the best part. And it's comped so freaking well. Like the attention to detail is there. That is like a big part of the joke. It's this weird thing, but you put so much time into the joke. Yeah. That's to me where it, you know, you appreciate it on another level. It's beautiful how there's a place for this in our world. I know, right? As tools sort of become available, you just look at like a video like this. The amount of, of things in there that we take for granted now were not possible 20 years ago. Yeah, it's getting crazier and crazier because like people can just do everything themselves these days. Yeah, I definitely think the tools present new possibilities that just would not be there before. It's kind of a pretty huge deal because we've seen that like in everything from like visual effects to like editing. You could make a CG image on your home computer before you could edit a video on it. The processing power for video is still way higher than, hey, I need to make some wireframes. It's actually a pretty great segue to a clip I want to show you guys too. Good morning. This is your wake up call. This movie is more relevant than ever because it takes place in 2021. This is like the coolest clip for people like us who are into like CG stuff and VR. And this movie did it over, what is it, 25 years ago? Here it is. Let's see how it holds up to test of time. 
Welcome to BRT Online. So we're watching this and it's like, okay, this is goofy old movie graphics. You know, it's early 90s CG rendering. And what makes this special is they did all this stuff on home PCs. Really? They weren't using like big workstations from like huge VFX houses. It's basically one of the first films where desktop rendered 3D was put in a movie. That's crazy. Wow. And that's crazy. When you look back at like the Lawnmower Man stuff or even Jurassic Park, you know, like that's not a computer you can just go and buy. No, that's like a friggin' ILM yeah, crazy yeah. box. I could crash you from here, man. Wipe out your entire board. Johnny, don't. It's funny how some of it is actually, it's like, oh, it looks so dumb, but some of it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, you know, it's got all your funny 90s tropey design and stuff, but knowing that process that goes into it, it's like a prototype version of 3D Studio Max probably, or maybe some C4Ds in there. I'm not totally sure. But... That's awesome. I can only imagine like troubleshooting that stuff way back in the day. They're like, oh, how do I get this spline to, to be like, you know, moved and positioned. And now it's like the problems we're dealing with today are like, how can I get my boobs looking sweeter? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but, but really though, for real. <laughs> oh, yeah, like the contrast is, is hilarious. Dude, that's great. That's freaking great. That was our last corridor react. Oh, man. That's <laughs> awesome. episode ever. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. <laughs> that's a wrap on this series. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, we have an emergency message for you, which is why we're taking the tiny emergency react couch. This Wednesday, we have a auction, an NFT auction with Beeple. It's for charity. It's gonna be super cool. There's gonna be an awesome render challenge video that goes with it as well. So make sure you watch the video and check out our makersplace.com slash corridor digital account. You'll see some pretty cool stuff up there. This Wednesday for charity. It's big. Let's help some people. Makersplace.com slash corridor digital. Link in the description below. This Wednesday with Beeple. It's, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah, somehow we managed to do an auction with Beeple. <laughs> we don't get it either. It's crazy. <laughs> this art style is freaking awesome. Yeah, I like that super boxy projection map kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, look at that. It's like not even projected properly. This is art, man. Wow, this is so good. This is super trippy. It's so minimal, doing like the least amount of work for the maximum amount of output. Like the color, the composition, the lighting. The time consuming part I see in this is like, well, everything is made from scratch to fit the style. But it's also designed in a very thoughtful way to like fit into a very specific nuanced design language. Like how are we gonna do spokes? Oh, okay, let's just jam them all together like that. When it comes to CG art, you know, there's two goals. There's either make something photo real or your goal is to make something expressive. If you're going for a sense of realism, you're not trying to convey an emotion, you're trying to convey reality. And the moment you wanna make it expressive, you're like, all right, well, forget reality, forget what things are supposed to look like. I'm going to be expressive with it. I'm going to use art to convey something higher than reality is able to capture. This is like that perfect example. This captures a feeling and an emotion and like a tone that is possible to get when you're doing it in reality. If it was really a story about a one-eyed cat with a tongue hanging out, it almost might be unwatchable. It would be a horror movie. All right, guys. So I'm going to go summon my good buddy, Ren. Mike, it's been chill. I'll see you soon. Oh, oh, Jesus <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> really? what up, Mike? This is what I think is over the top. Oh, it's really find a way to take it up a notch. All right, I have a clip that I wanted to show you guys. It's from a very talented company called Method Studios, and this was just a fun little music video they threw together. Anyone who likes simulations, this has every possible simulation in it. It's like, just crazy because it's got that organic human motion yeah. mixed with like just crazy physical simulations that are not physically possible. Yeah, it's like, I feel like there are three main things going on through all of this that work really well. One is the motion capture. These are actual dancers performing and their performances are being captured live. And then the second aspect are actual artists going in and creating all these crazy simulations attached to these people. <laughs> and it's reacting to how the person's moving throughout the scene. 
And the third stage of all this is the actual render. It looks very realistic. Super tight. Bottom to top. So do you guys have any idea what programs are used for this? I would assume it's mostly Houdini. That was gonna be my guess as well. I think this is Houdini. Us little C4D boys here, we don't have that power. I think it comes down to the fact that motion capture, that's been a commodity with a lot of scarcity for a very, very long time. The only way to get animation is, yeah, just <laughs> Which is very hard to do compared yeah. to the suit. Just a simple motion like this, you know, or some simple dance could take literally a week to animate, or it could be like captured within literally minutes. Yeah. But the flip side of this is that when you do have to hand animate it like that, you have so much more intention with every single move. That's why like any CG animated movie, all of the animation is overly exaggerated because it is a cartoon and yeah. every motion has to carry with it a lot of like intent. Guys, there's a lot of great clips here today, but in order to wrap this out, I think we're gonna need Nico back here. <laughs> hey, I'm back. 41% of our viewers aren't subscribed. And if you're one of those 41%, you go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you gotta use this one. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna use this one. All right. Consider subscribing. We really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So it would be remiss to have an artist react series without taking a look at any of Mike's actual work. So let's take a look at your Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> There's videos at the top, like bad stuff. Oh bad God, stuff? Bad stuff. <laughs> bad stuff. Okay, yeah, it was labeled, in all fairness to me, it was labeled bad stuff. <laughs> and boom, you can literally see the second that you guys got demonetized. <laughs> Shut her down, boys. <laughs> Shut her down. Three strikes, you're out. You just got literally three community freaking violation strikes. <laughs> Concurrently on top of each other and this platform is done. I don't think I'm alone when I ask, how do you come up with something like that? Like, yeah, Okay, what do you mean? This seems obvious. Well, how do you come up with something like that? <laughs> You're telling me that was not obvious to you. This is straight up not <laughs> child appropriate. I love this one. Oh yeah, oh dude, yeah. That jittery Pikachu head. Like, how did you whip this together in a day? This, this is like- No, so these were not done in a day. The every days are done in a day. These are usually done in probably like two or three days. Usually they start as an every day, and then it's like, oh, I could animate that. Are these like Mixamo animations, or are you making these animations yourself? And to really quick explain what Mixamo is, it's basically a stock footage site for actual animations. Yeah, it's got tons of different people, dancing people. Like falling over. Falling over. It's like Spider-Man. Yeah, <laughs> punching, yeah. And you can sort of like, very, you know, quickly and sort of like easily plug those into your models and create stuff. This one actually is from a Archiviz piece of software for generating crowds. Like this is probably from Mixamo. I would say it's a mix of the Rococo suit, Mixamo, and sort of like hand animating, you know, certain things. And then a lot of these have sort of like simulations on top of that to simulate the chords. So Mike, if somebody wanted to make something quick, what would your advice be to them? My advice would just be set a timer and set it in five minute increments and stick to it and spend a half hour versus trying to like cram in and like, I gotta learn every single thing about this in the next like week. Spacing it out, giving you like time to process that and really absorb the information and then steadily incrementally working over a long period of time, I think is just such a better way to like learn something. I think it's easy to sort of get lost in the weeds on creating, especially if there is no deadline. It makes it hard to just sort of draw a line in the sand and be like, it's done. Yeah, artists really need constraints. So not only did we get to sit down with Mike to look at some really cool visual effects, we also got to pick his brain about the whole NFT space. It was a really cool opportunity for us to ask him questions, and I'm sure you'll be very interested to hear those answers as well. Subscribe, stay tuned, it's a big week. It's a big couple weeks coming up. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Have you ever been overwhelmed by the idea of making a website? You're like, eh, I should probably get a website, but I don't know the first thing about HTML coding. Well, fortunately, you don't have to know anything about designing a website because there are award-winning templates all already there for you to choose from. Now let's say you've got a team and you need a lot of people contributing to the same website. Well, with multiple contributors, everyone can do exactly that. 
You probably also have a bunch of social media accounts. Well, guess what? It's super easy to cross post between the two of them because it all synchronizes very nicely. And since you're probably running a business off this website, it really helps to know your audience. And with traffic overview, you can see exactly who's visiting your sites, what kind of page views you're getting, where they're coming from. And if you end up running into problems, well, they've got 24 seven support that wins awards as well. So you know they're good. All you gotta do is go to squarespace.com slash quarter crew and you will get 10% off your first domain. Thanks for watching. I wanna see if people can outro this video. Hey, I. <laughs> <laughs> You want to leave a comment below? I can't do it. <laughs> oh boy. I can't do it. I can't do it. I feel very weird doing it. I feel very weird. I'm not, I don't have that like. When it's time to do VFXRs, react. We gotta get hyped up. It's time to go. It's a certain kind of energy and it doesn't feel weird when you see it. What is up everybody? We are back with a very exciting episode. <laughs> But it feels, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure. I love the energy that you bring. It's great. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate it. Always oh, super fun to like hang out with you guys. You guys are, you know, blow me away with the stuff you guys are doing. So well, thanks, man. Likewise. Time. You can basically check out all of people's work on Instagram. Not suitable for work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do it when you're home. Alrighty, we'll see you guys in the next one.